All right, we're gonna get started in the time zone, and then thanks for joining, and then hopefully you guys enjoy the day zero of the QCon. Surprisingly, this is a day zero, not day one. So we have a, a lot of interesting stuff for the next couple of days, and then, so here we are. <laughs> So we're gonna talk a little bit about like the next 25 minutes, very optimized topic, like a stream, streaming, uh, streaming learning, uh, the cloud every application development for simplifying for dependency and your like a test driven development pattern with the micro rocks and quarters. And my name is Daniel. Maybe some people saw me in this early morning. I got another like a lightning talk with my friend you know, Mauricio here. So new app dev working group in CNCF. I'm also Java champion and CNCF ambassador, which allowed me to uh, talk a lot of great, interesting application development stuff, not only like uh, only Java, but also many uh, cloud every application, uh, building, deploying, and managing on the cloud. And here's my colleague. Yeah, Laurent. hi everyone. So my name is Laurent. And um, I got background in uh, distributed system and cloud native application design, mainly in financial services. I used to work also at vendors like Google and Red Hat, and currently I'm uh, an employee from Postman, the API company, and I'm fully dedicated to uh, the Microx project. I founded some years ago, and that is now a CNCF project. So we'll talk about this in a few minutes. We have another founder here, Gashin, <laughs> the Michael Ross. Yeah. <laughs> so, just starting with a question. Uh, did you ever felt that you've been too far when they adding a new service dependencies to your application? Because it brought a lot of troubles. Maybe it was not yet ready. Maybe you cannot access to a testing environment very easily. Maybe it lacks of documentation. Maybe it lacks of a test data set, a lot of stuff. So, uh, but this is the real pain in distributed system. The pain is increased as soon as you had new service dependencies to your uh, application. It increased in terms of management, in terms of governance and so on. But the real pain increase is also for developers because this is the moment when they are starting to do crazy things when trying to set up their development machine or development environments. So it can be doing crazy things in the old good way. I mean, uh, installing everything on your machine, trying to make everything works on your machine, but obviously it works only on your machine. Yeah. And it could be also the, the new way of doing things. I mean, uh, setting up a, a, a custom a Kubernetes cluster, maybe having Minikube on your machine, pulling out dozens of containers and burning CPUs and brain power to handle this complexity, okay? So, yeah, and in fact, and a lot of people are actually using their own corporate laptop or desktop, which is not a lot of you install or download some fancy like AI model or containers <laughs> on your free. So you already ask your like a security team, hey, I, can I download this kind of thing? And absolutely not, <laughs> yeah. you cannot do that. You cannot do that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this is the hard reality for developers. Uh, adopting cloud native means sometimes new challenge and a lot of complexity because you have to handle all of these different protocols and formats. So talking gRPC, GraphQL, uh, Avro, Schema, uh, JSON, this kind of stuff. You have also to turn to a system mean sometimes because you have to set up Go application, Node.js application, Java application, also set up maybe message brokers. And sometimes you may tend to think that we Switch some years ago to service oriented architecture to have uh, loose coupling at the bit time level, yeah. but now we have a very strong coupling at the runtime yeah. level because on your machine you are trying to get everything in line, get all your dependencies up and running to be able to work efficiently. And of course, you're not the only one on the team, so you have to find a solution that scales with the team. Yeah, you might want to find some very fantastic tool you know, for the 
the next couple of days in the QCon and then like a boot area or some of the session. Wow, this is a really cool tool for developer. I'm happy to share that thing. And then first question from your developer team, how do I set up and then how can I build that? Mm. And then yeah. on my local machine or on my local corporate company and like a computer, laptop stuff. It's a big challenge for them. Every single day, new yeah. project, <laughs> new open source came out and then you cannot figure out how to do that. Exactly, exactly. Um, so uh, there must be a better way to do things. Sure. And the, the way we, the approach we, we defend and we discuss today is having this ability to, to fake it, to fake your service dependencies uh, during the development phases before you, you actually deploy it. And um, so her approach is to use a, some kind of sandbox. When, when I say a sandbox, it's not like just playing with like kids with sands. I'd rather, I prefer this analogy of having a sand castle because you look that, you know that it looks very realistic. There yeah. are well-designed uh, towers and uh, dungeons and gates and so on. It looks realistic, but it's not necessarily the same building blocks that your production system, okay? It just looks realistic. It's a, it's a matter of interface. And the nice thing in a distributed system is that we get API, and API are just interface we can use to simulate services instead of actually using real dependencies. Um, what we are talking about is not yet another centralized system. What we want is to have this ability to shift left and to have an enhanced developer experience on our laptops in our inner loop. And this experience should cover two types of dependencies. Of course, there are the, the standards of the shared dependencies like databases, caches, uh, message brokers, and so on. But there is also the, this huge amount of custom API, maybe third-party APIs or in-house APIs because your application most of the time has to deal with the, the CRM system, has to call the, the product catalog service, as also maybe to call a, a Trilio API to send an SMS. So we have those two types of dependencies to manage. And for the of the shelf dependencies, the, the solution is obvious at the moment. Uh, I assume that a lot of you already know this library called Test Container, maybe? Yeah. How many people are actually How many people? Test Container? Wow. Yeah, wow. Uh, so, yeah. That's nice. Awesome. That's nice. <laughs> Test Container is really a fantastic library that is uh, available in different languages that allows you to run a uh, local containerized workload on your machine in a very uh, predictable way, let's say. And it's also very flexible because it allows you to deal with the container lifecycle, with the network setup, with the bindings, yeah. and so on. Um, the main goal of a test container is to try to reduce some technology gap between your local and production. So whatever you stand up your production database, messaging broker, or API, or among others, so you're going to stand up very small and uh, almost like a minimal configuration on your local machine. As long as you have uh, your own container runtime, like a Powerman desktop or a Docker desktop or like a, some other thing, and then uh, uh, good enough your resources, the CPU, memory, disk, and stuff. Yes, excellent. And the really nice thing about test containers is that we have modules. Yes. So typically for all the things of the shelf, like databases, caches, message broker, we already have the standard modules, and that's what we are going to use in our fake it approach, sandbox yeah. approach. And uh, these modules are available in different languages. And for the external or in-house APIs, we are going to use this project I'm working on, Microx, that is actually leveraging test containers to give you simulations for all the different APIs your application needs to work correctly. Yep. So test containers bring a lot of benefits, a lot of opportunities, but sometimes it's also quite hard to set up because you have to figure out which container image I should use, uh, how to set up the network, yep. how to bind this in your application, and as application developer, we don't want to, to handle read those documentation. Of stuff. I don't want to go yeah. to read the read me that file or something exactly. else. Exactly. I just yeah. want to NPM run dev <laughs> or Maven dev and that's it. I yeah. don't want to handle this. So I want some magic. 
yeah. Danielle, right. can you propose some magic? Sure, yeah, that, that's, that, thanks for shouting out. So if you already have a user, a lot of experience test container, which is really awesome, yeah, done us wrong. So we not gonna say test container wrong because test container is really good and then you have still specify some of the configuration and the container image pass or some um, among others. For example, I need to bring my PostgreSQL on my test container and the which PostgreS container image and registry I need to specify and what is the, uh, require the key and value, for example, like a JDBC URL or a username password or uh, among others. So that's still like a, some of the challenges for developer. Already you need to bring your own test container with some specification and the configuration. So that's actually Quarkus a new Java framework, uh, like a, some more cloud native. But the main goal of Quarkus is try to increase the developer productivity. And I saw a lot of people actually give it a try using Quarkus. And we have a, like a, a Kevin DeBoer, my colleague, he's also Java champion. So he and I, he and I we have uh, been doing a lot of the uh, using Quarkus for many use cases, not only like uh, microservices or even AI application development. With that, uh, Quarkus it gives some try a lot of benefit, like a pretty much uh, formula with the containerized application and then uh, in part of like a reactive non-reactive application development at the same time, which with the same method, same classes, and then uh, like a, uh, how to integrate Kubernetes, how to uh, generate Kubernetes manifest, like a deployment and service, and then ingress among others. So you don't need to read some documentation, how to generate, how to create some YAML file for application developer standpoint. The Quarkus automatically generate whole YAML file for you, and you can just run it on that. And uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, developer productivity, one of the great thing. So here's just some number, I don't want to say uh, the detail. So just compared to traditional Java, it's a really fast, like a, a, like a millisecond startup, and the small memory footprint, like it's just uh, 10 or 20 like a megabyte uh, to start up with the native corporation, integration Graviant, and among others, not only a RESPR API, or even data transaction, and, and so on. So today we're gonna really be talk about here is uh, test container stuff. So we can say continual testing based on test-driven development practices, and, and then how do I keep doing test-driven development for developers? Because I have no time to create a unit test and then get, keep running on that, uh, rather than keep focusing on application development. So in order to uh, remove the challenge from developers, so Quarkus actually uh, designed continual testing feature based on test container, and then you don't need to set or specify test container specification. The Quarkus automatically stand up, uh, automatically set up like an image pass, a crest registry, or the configuration and key and value, you can actually find that and then you can override whatever you want. So for example, like a, some uh, username password, like a username Kevin DeBoer and then password my super secret source and then everybody knows that already, I'm sorry for that, but you can actually change that with your some random generate, nobody understand like a keyword, like a only understand by Spark. Anyway, so this is, a, a, there are many uh, dev services based on test container. And we also luckily have a MicroRocks, which is one of the CNCF sandbox project. It says, it's a, uh, given some problem evidence, uh, uh, like a, a lot of people actually are interested in a test container. And then what about the contract testing? Not just simple mocking or simple unit testing, because in reality, you have more complex testing, which is the contract testing. Yeah. So here's just some mechanism. So I don't want to spend a lot of time here, but basically Quarkus demo, like a live coding capability, stand up your runtime uh, with your source code, and then whenever you change the code, it automatically recompile, rebuild, restart behind the scene, and then showing the result. And in the meantime, the continual testing also keep testing your application, and then you can enable micro rocks capability as dev services inside uh, Quarkus dev services and continual testing, it allows you have a more uh, complex contract testing and mocking and so on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I think the easiest way to get out of this, yes, get figured out, 
is to switch to the demo. So if you want to flash the QR code, you will get access. Uh, yeah, to we're going to give you like a next 25 seconds. No, it's like a 10 <laughs> seconds to scan it. Yeah. So it's a, a Git repo available. And then we're going to keep updating Quarkus version as well as the Michael Roth stuff. Exactly. So uh, uh, Roland and I, we recently upgraded the race Quarkus 3.16.1. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yes, so to illustrate the benefits of the uh, two solutions together, we are gonna focus on these simple use cases. We are going to focus to, on this order service. We are going to order pastries because we love pastries, especially French pastries, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. here's a pa so, Parisian, yeah. <laughs> exactly, so we will rely <laughs> on the third party APIs that will provide uh, our catalog, uh, our catalog service for pastries yeah. or cosque. We will have to provide a very robust APIs for different sailing channels yeah. in front of the order service. I'm like more like a donut person I'm from Boston. <laughs> <laughs> and we have also to interact with a payment service that will check the payment information for the order. And this will be an interaction that will be done through Kafka messaging, okay? So typically we see that as a developer, this can be really complex to set up because you have a third party APIs, you have a Kafka broker. <laughs> And so you can imagine the mess when trying to do all of this on this laptop. And we are gonna illustrate how to do this very easily using both uh, solutions. So if you want much more detail, this is on the website. This is, there is a complete workflow on uh, And you how are to more get than welcome the... to create a pull request or issues as the open source. Yeah, sure, sure. So, Let's switch and show you some code. So this is a typical Quarkus application. For the moment, Microx has not been enabled in this application. And so I have just starting it. I have, yes, my main sources, my test resources and so on. And you can see that here I've got my Quarkus application running. I can visit the dev UI. I can see that I have different endpoint right here. And typically this endpoint that allows me to uh, place new order. Okay, so as a developer that has just started with this application, I can, yes, try to call this API and issue a curl command. Okay, placing one order and oops, that oh, failed. You got an error. I got four, <laughs> five ho ho error. And this is expected because I just started my application and as expected, it tells me that I have not set the proper base URL, base UI for my third party service, okay? So I can do typical things, uh, git clone everything and try to get it running on my machine, but I prefer using Microx. So just let me show you how to enable it. So you, this is the file to enable different dependencies, uncommand this and just relaunch my application. This is a magic part. As long as you uh, add like uh, some dependency on the Maven project or a module in Gradle, the Quarkus identify, oh, you're gonna do that, this one, and I'm gonna let you stand up like a test container automatically, AKA Quarkus Dev Services. Exactly. One thing I've done also before for preparing this demonstration is that in my resources folder here, I have bring all the different uh, API related artifacts, uh, all the different API contracts of my dependencies. So I have an open API file, I have a, maybe a Postman collection, all different kinds of artifacts my, my course will be able to, to discover and to leverage automatically. So now as a client, I can just retry this curl command and yes, that's it. Now this time I can place an order I, and I can start playing around with my API without taking care of any dependencies. You may wonder how it works and why I can now place order for Milfeuille. And this is the Quarkus plus Microx magic at the you beginning. Might want, you might want to show like uh, some, what containers actually running on behind the scenes. Yeah, what containers, yeah. yeah. This is not like uh, some hard code. So it literally running on some container behind the scene. So when Quarkus Dev Service starts, you can see that there are a bunch of the containers running, uh, like Quay.io, uh, Microsoft, org, and then there are many uh, containers automatically stand up. Yeah, exactly. If now I'm getting back to my uh, Dev UI, uh, I can see that I have a new extension right here, and I can get access to the Microsoft UI that is running undercover. And you can see typically that 
at the start of my application, Microx has discovered all your dependencies, has analyzed your open API file, existing Postman collection and whatever, and it has produced uh, endpoints for you. And these endpoints have been plugged into your application so that you have a realistic dependencies that is working now on your machine and is very lightweight, very fast to start up. Okay? Yeah, this is the really beauty of the micro log. So maybe you have some experience to use Swagger UI before uh, to like uh, to retrieve your API endpoint URL and some parameter based on JSON format. But this is way better than you can actually do like an API driven development for like contract testing or mocking, or you can actually stand a lot of the artifacts exactly. at yeah. the same time. And the nice thing is that it's not just for REST APIs, it's for all kinds of APIs. So GRPC, you can have gRPC service. Yeah. And also here, for example, I have an event driven service that is representing the interface I've got with my payment system. So if I have a look at my application running, for example, Let's look right here. You can see that each and every three seconds, I received a new message record. And this message record, this Kafka record, are actually uh, produced by Microx. Microx acts as a producer for the messages so that it allows you to quickly test this interaction with your Kafka messages. And it can be very also dynamic. So here you can, so you can see I received a message for, for Laurent. And these data come from my async API file here. And if I just change Laurent and turn it to, to Daniel, I would, okay. Now I will receive message for the consumer, Daniel, okay? So it's very easy for developers to have new cases to change things. So it can very easily check how its application reacts depending on the different events. Yeah, there, this is just some kind of keyword, like uh, async API and dash open API, right? Yeah. The primary and secondary yeah. artifact. Yeah, async API is the, the sister specification of open API, but for asynchronous driven systems like Kafka, RabbitMQ, yep. NATS, whatever. Okay, so this is the first use case I wanted to demonstrate from Microx. We've got a, a second one that is the integration within your unit test. Okay, so imagine you are writing a piece of code to call the REST API of your product catalog, okay, and you want to test this uh, efficiently. And most of the time, uh, you'll just finish by writing a test with mock objects. So you don't actually test your network call, your uh, JSON serialization, or this kind of stuff. Here, with the Quark with Microx combo, things are very easy because our test here is just a Quarkus test. And because it is a Quarkus test, it can also launch Microx to actually produce a real endpoint simulation. And now your unit tests here are actually uh, doing a real network call with JSON serialization and this kind of stuff, okay? So it's test enriched, enhanced, so that you don't just test what's in the JVM, but you are able to uh, getting more confidence on the network calls and this kind of interaction. And obviously, because we support all different kinds of protocols, you can do exactly the same thing for uh, event-driven architecture. So here, for example, if I want to write a test to be sure that I can consume an event and it triggers the correct uh, business function uh, when the event is consumed, I can just write a single test here, wait a moment for having events, and then check that the events have been correctly consumed and translated into my, da my database. And here again, this is a Quarkus test that is powered by Microx under the hood. And so what we are doing actually is popping out a new Kafka instance, sending messages and consuming those real messages. So here again is unit test, but extended, so you're getting much more confidence. Yeah. So okay. we are running out of time. And then we, we are running out of time. Yeah, just yeah, we uh, probably wrap it up. time to conclude and to wrap it up. Yeah. Key takeaways. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah, we, we have so short time to show. And then the three takeaways you might understand and then remember would be very helpful. 
So basically, test container and a micro log and a Quarkus and Dev services to uh, give us an opportunity for developer to simplify the Dev environment uh, with uh, like an interoperable process stuff. And then it's not only simplify, it also accelerated that process. You can uh, quickly stand up your local environment and just uh, focusing on writing code. And then in the meantime, you can uh, uh, get feedback from the adder, what something adder happened, what better file, the functionality and feature. It allows you can spend like a less time to make it same capability. You can do that for like a one day to make it happen, but now you can just a couple uh, hours or even less than one hour to implement same application prop, uh, capability on that. And the last thing is, yeah, see, it also improves a lot your API quality because it puts the different guardrails you need to uh, have early detection of any drift or any uh, breaking changes introduction within your, your development. So eventually it leads to a higher quality and more reliable APIs. That's it. Uh, that's what we all have today. And then we're gonna stick around in after this session. If you have any question, uh, please feel free to reach out to us and ask. We are more than happy to ask, uh, answer that thing. Yeah. And, then, and if you want to learn more and come and say hi to the to the booth, we have some booths on the Wednesday and Thursday Sounds in good. the project pavilion. So feel free to reach out and ask any question. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And here's a feedback QR. Yeah. yeah, scan that and then give us a thumbs up, like a five star, something like that. <laughs> Thank you very much.